بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters, I'd like you to imagine the reality of our father Adam عليه السلام. How blessed and fortunate was Adam that Allah created him with His own two hands, and Allah سبحانه وتعالى spoke with him directly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to enter Jannah, him and our mother Hawa, to eat and drink bountifully and plentifully. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with Jannah immediately. And he lived there for many, many centuries. We don't know how long, there is no time in Jannah. And Allah just said to him, don't eat of this one tree. But Adam being Adam, and we are all the children of Adam, he slipped and he ate of that tree. And he suffered the consequences of that. Imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, being in the shoes of our father Adam. Imagine the shame that he would have felt after all that Allah has blessed him with, after giving him Jannah, after creating it with his own two hands and speaking directly with him. Adam fell into that sin. And Allah told Adam to come down to this earth. Adam did not know how to eat and drink from this earth. Adam had never tasted pain. He had never tasted anguish. He had never experienced fear. And he is thrown into the wilderness of this world after having been in Jannah. And worse than the wilderness of this world was the feeling of being alone, was the feeling of having fallen into disfavor after having been in favor. So how did Adam السلام, return into the fold of Allah's mercy? Allah tells us in the Quran, Adamu kalimat." We recited it today. Allah taught Adam kalimat, some words. Allah taught Adam some kalimat, fataba alayh. And so Allah accepted the repentance of our father Adam. Adam symbolizes all of us. We are all following in the footsteps of Adam. Every time we commit a sin, we should think of our father Adam. After all that Allah has given us, all of the favors and blessings that we have, and yet we still turn away from Allah. In spite of and despite of each and every blessing, we still sin. How can we get back into favor? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to make dua to Him. Adam was taught certain words. What are those words? It is mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ These are the words that Allah taught to our father Adam alayhi salam. And therefore from this, inshaAllah, this series Ramadan will be du'as from the Qur'an. Qur'anic du'as. What can we learn from the du'as within the Qur'an? How can we benefit from those du'as that are mentioned in our book? and the du'as that Allah taught us to say in the Qur'an. And we begin with the first du'a, which is the du'a of Adam alayhi salam. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ يُرَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ It can be argued, my dear brothers and sisters, that the first real act of worship that Adam did, even before salah, there was no zakah, there is no hajj, even before fasting, the first action of worship that Adam did was that of making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was no ibadah in Jannah you don't do ibadah in Jannah now that he's been expelled from Jannah and he is on this earth what is the first action that the first human being did that can be considered an action of ibadah it is the action of dua and therefore dua is the essence of worship as our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said dua is mukhul ibadah and mukh means the backbone it means the essence dua is the essence of worship Allah says in the Quran وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord has said make dua to me I will respond to you إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Those who are too arrogant to worship me shall enter Jahannam humiliated Notice Allah begins the verse make dua to me and he ends the verse whoever is too arrogant to worship me dua 
and worship are linked together. Dua is the essence of worship. Only the true believer makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the concept of dua is in fact linked to Ramadan as well. Because in the series of verses about Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ These are the verses that occur smack in the middle about Ramadan and about the revelation of the Quran. Right after that, Allah says, when your servants ask me about me, then I am telling them directly, I am close to them. Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. I shall answer the dua of the one who makes dua when he makes dua. Ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an. Fal yastajibu li wal yu'minu bi. Let them make dua to me. Let them believe in me if they want to be rightly guided. So this month, my dear brothers and sisters, we will be embarking on a series about dua, the reality of dua, the etiquettes of dua, but we will do it under the framework of Quranic du'as. What are the du'as mentioned in the Quran? And we began, as we said, with the du'a of Adam, and we began with the very beginning. Fatalaqa Adam Rabbihi Kalimat. How beautiful is it that the one you have sinned against teaches you how to ask for forgiveness. Imagine you have sinned against Allah and Allah is then turning to Adam and saying, don't worry, make this dua and I will forgive you. The one whom you have disobeyed is the one teaching you how to expiate your disobedience. And this is of the strongest encouragements. It gives us iman and hope. It gives us sense, a sense of optimism that the very entity whom we have disobeyed, he is the one telling us, don't worry, I will forgive you. Use these duas. So especially the Quranic du'as, we need to memorize them. And especially the du'as that Allah has taught to the prophets and the righteous. These are powerful du'as. And especially in the month of Ramadan, we need to make those du'as. So Rabbana, uh, uh, as, as Adam alayhi uh, salam said, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. The du'a begins by saying, Rabbana, O oh our Lord. He acknowledges, the word Rabb acknowledges that I am the Abd and Allah is the Rabb. By saying Rabb, you clearly demarcate who are you and who am I. Oh Allah, you are my Lord. You are my master. You are the one who created me. You are the one who nourishes me. The word Rabb indicates that, oh Allah, I am nothing. Because Rabb means I depend on you. Rabb means I need you. Without you, I'm nothing. So Adam says, Rabbana, you are my Rabb. Zalamna anfusana. The dua begins with an acknowledgement of falling short. I haven't done my job. I acknowledge, oh Allah, I am a sinner. I acknowledge I am not perfect. Zalamna anfusana. And this is the essence of humility. And Islam is about humility. Why? Because the meaning of Islam is to submit to Allah. That is literally the meaning of Islam is to humble and submit. And the opposite of Islam, the antithesis of Islam is arrogance and kibir. And that is demonstrated in Iblis. When Allah said to Iblis, bow down, Abba was takbara as we recited today. Abba was takbara wa kana min al kafirin. And Iblis did not make dua to Allah for forgiveness. Iblis was too arrogant to make dua for forgiveness. Whereas Adam made dua immediately. Rabbana zalamna anfusana. So we begin the dua first and foremost by acknowledging who we are calling. We use Allah's names and attributes. And we're going to come back to this point over and over again. Secondly, a perfect dua acknowledges our own shortcomings. Ya Rabb. I haven't been as good as I should be. Ya Rabbi, I acknowledge I am a sinner. Ya Rabbi, I am coming to you with my own shortcomings, having fallen short of the obligations. Ya Rabbi, it is my fault. Zalamna anfusana. I did this. We ascribe the evil to ourselves. We ascribe the sin to ourselves. Unlike Iblis, who blamed Allah when he committed the sin. He said, as in the Quran, that... قَالَ رَبِّ بِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Oh my Lord, you're the one who tricked me. You deceive me, O Allah. This is Iblis. Contrast Iblis and Adam. The humility of Adam with the arrogance of Iblis. So the dua of the mu'min comes from humility. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا They said, O oh our Lord, O oh our Rabb, we have wronged ourselves. Don't blame anyone for your sin other than yourself. You have committed the sin. I have committed the sin. Don't point fingers at anyone else. No one forced Adam to eat of the tree. He ate of the tree. Then he acknowledged his sin. Zalamna anfusana. Then, وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Ya Rabb, if you do not forgive us, 
and have mercy on us, then we will be of those who are destroyed, of those who have no hope, of those who are lost. Notice here as well the determination, the sincerity, the, 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 the pleading, the begging, because you really have to demonstrate your poverty when you truly need something, sincerity kicks in. You are humble, you are meek, you are asking with determination. Our Prophet wasallam said, when you ask from Allah, ask with determination. Ask because you mean it. Because you mean it. Without Allah, you are nothing. Without Allah's rahmah, you are nothing. If Allah does not give you rahmah, you will not get rahmah. So you had better beg for that rahmah sincerely from the heart. The essence of dua is to plead sincerely. That is the heart of dua. قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, if you don't forgive us, and if you don't have mercy on us, there is no hope for us. We will be destroyed. We will be lost. Look at the desperation. Look at the begging, the pleading. All of this is a manifestation of the essence of humility to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also notice two things are asked in this dua. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا مَغْفِرَةً and رَحْمَةً Why? مَغْفِرَةً dissolves the previous sins. Maghfirah, you have a long list of deeds. We're all entering Ramadan. This is the time for Maghfirah. This is the time for Tawbah. We began Ramadan with wanting to cleanse our sins. So Adam alayhi salam is saying, Oh Allah, if you don't forgive us. Forgiveness means the sins I have done, I will not be punished for. But if your bank account is negative and the person forgives your debts and now you get back to zero, you are zero. There's no positive there. If your loans are forgiven, you don't have any money. You're still kind of bankrupt. That's why. وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا Then you add on. وَتَرْحَمْنَا You want more than to be zero, right? Nobody wants the bank account to be zero. You want more than just to be not in debt. You want to have a positive in your bank balance. So, وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا Then you say, وَتَرْحَمْنَا And Allah's rahma means you will be blessed with more. You will do good deeds. Your deeds will be accepted. So the rahma will then make your bank account positive. The bank account is not the real bank account, it is the, the spiritual bank account, right? So the maghfirah is to eliminate the debt. You have done dhulm, you have done sin. Now the rahmah is to push you forward, to get you into Jannah. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ We need both of these for Allah's maghfirah and for Allah's um, entering Jannah, excuse me. We need both of these. We want our sins to be forgiven and we want Allah Azza wa Jal to have mercy on us. So this is our first dua and every day we we will take one dua from the Quran and examine it and analyze it. And I want inshallah ta'ala for us to memorize these duas. And uh, if you want to take notes from tomorrow or the future, the videos will be online as well. But the goal is that we use these duas in our daily routine. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanukunana min al-khasirin wa akhru da'awana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.